The world is with Ukraine right now in this difficult moment. And uh, of course, we uh, really hope that there will be peace in the land, not just in Ukraine, but every part of the world. And uh, we preach peace. And uh, we also expect to enjoy peace, even right here in Nigeria. On that note, I welcome you to Sport Pizza, where you get the absolute best in the exciting world of sport. My name is Brownson Wana. There are lots of things on the table on the show. And of course, uh, I must also tell you that um, this um, Ukraine-Russia controversy, uh, I don't want to say war, it uh, makes almost half of the stories. And guess what? This year, we'll be experiencing the biggest football showpiece in the world. FIFA World Cup and Nigeria will know their fate this month of March if we are going to, uh, if we are going to the World Cup or not. So <laughs> it's going to be a very big month for us. But first, let's take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll have you all the details. Don't go away. Welcome back. Now, let's take you straight to the thick of the action. But first, let me bring on my strike partner, Olakule Philippe, joins me at this time. Olakule Philippe, thank you for joining us on the program today. Yeah, it's great to be here, Bronson. Uh, I'm very delighted to be here. Our minds are taught uh, with the people of Ukraine, uh, uh, with what they are going through right now. I think it's not um, something that um, everyone, the people of the world, are really very delighted about. But um, uh, what can we do? Uh, we are here to talk sport and I'm once again, I'm delighted to be here. All right, that's what it is. Now, let's get on with the show. Now, first on the radar, Qatar, Road to Qatar 2022. Um, now, this is not a very good one for all footballers in Russia right now because FIFA has ordered Russia not to play their game under their national flag. Uh, Kule, uh, this is going to be a very big blow for the players. Now, to play games in neutral venue, all their games would also be played in neutral venue. Uh, now, as if that's not enough, now some countries, but before we get to that, uh, uh, I mean, we we'll understand World Cup qualifying games, one final round to go, uh, home and away for major teams, apart from teams that have qualified. But uh, whether Russia have qualified or not, their remaining games will be played in neutral venue. Yeah, they are neutral, their remaining games will be played on neutral venue. and. Uh, uh, it's looking like um, they, they, some of the club, they, they will, according to FIFA, they are going to be playing their, their game without uh, their national flag being and the anthem uh, being recited. And they are going to play the games on neutral venue. And the question is, which country would be happy to host the Russian national team uh, with, with the way things are right now? But probably, except for countries who are in support of the uh, the ongoing war uh, against the Ukrainians, uh, countries like probably South Korea and all of that. But I think no same country would love to uh, host the, the the Russian national team right now in prosecuting the uh, the World Cup qualifying games. I, I think um, uh, uh, for me, I I totally disagree with FIFA uh, over this decision. The decision should have been the Russian Football Federation banned completely, uh, suspended uh, from the, uh, the World Cup qualifiers with, uh, with the, the, the kind of uh, unhuman uh, activities, uh, the war on Ukrainians was, was uncalled for. So I think with what other authorities are saying, uh, other uh, sports federations are saying, uh, I think FIFA said they're going to have to meet with other federations to decide yeah, on the Russia's right decisions face, right? to take. Yeah, so, uh, so I think for now, FIFA should have just hold on till they meet with other associations so that the the adequate me, uh, punishment should be meted out to the Russian Football Federation. Now, this, this, this is why um, FIFA is trying not to... Because for now that that decision has not been made, if Russia is asked to um, step down totally and then the, the decision goes the other way, it might cause some level of you know confusion. Now, this is what FIFA says, that the Football Union of Russia, they will, they will play under the name the Football Union, Union of, of Russia, Russia without their flag. Mm -hmm. Now, what this means is that it's not like a, a nation, but it's a Football Union of Russia. So, uh, I, I, I still think... FIFA is trying to get to a point where everybody is safe. Now, if they get to that decision, they can drop, um, uh, uh, of course, they can drop. Then the next team, you know, below takes over their spot. But right now, that decision has been made. So I think FIFA is trying to play safe. FIFA is just trying to make, make excuses for them. That's my, um, that's my perspective. That's the perspective I'm looking at things from. The Russian Football Federation are still under the Russian government. So what are we talking about? It is whatever is done by the leaders... 
uh, also goes to the I mean, the, any kind of punishment that is meted out to the leaders of uh, the government, the government of Russia, should also go to every other uh, association in uh, the country. So I think that uh, FIFA is not spot on on this at all. I think that the the Russian Football Federation, the Russian national team, should be banned from all football related activities. Now, also to let you know that some countries have said that they will refuse to reject playing Russian national team now. Countries like the England, Wales, Czech, Repo uh, Czech Republic, Poland, and of course Sweden have said that as it stands, they don't want to have anything to do with Russia as far as sports is concerned. And uh, it currently looks like um, uh, in the course of the, the week, the month, uh, if this is not really uh, managed well, more countries will join this list. Yeah, the Polish National the Football Federation of Poland came out to say they do not, they do not accept decision of uh, FIFA on um, having to play the games on neutral ground because they feel that should have been the other way around the Football Federation of Russia should be suspended and the same thing goes the countries are standing their ground even with this uh, decision being made by FIFA they are saying uh, United Kingdom that's England um, uh, Poland Sweden and the Czech Republic they, uh, these countries are saying they will not prosecute those games they are not uh, in agreement with FIFA and whatever decision FIFA makes as regards playing the games on neutral ground, they are not in agreement with it and the games will not go on from their own side. Well, I mean, uh, this subject will, of course, generate debate uh, in months to come. Now, last weekend, we saw countries, uh, football clubs around the world, um, showing lots of love, support for Ukraine. And um, one of the most touching moments I had last weekend was the game between Manchester City uh, of course, uh, uh, where we saw the, uh, Zilichenko and then um, the other player from the other club, also Ukrainian. I mean, when their flag was raised up, I got very emotional. I, I mean, the, he, he, Zilichenko couldn't stop crying. Uh, he, he, was, he was broken down and um, uh, I mean, it, it was really sad, sad moment. He could feel the love and passion he has for his country. Now, when he was interviewed... He said that um, he's worried about his family. He doesn't know how they're doing right now. Even though um, he's speaking with them, he doesn't know if they're safe or not. So, uh, I mean, it's, we really hope that this crisis uh, would end as soon as possible. Even Andrei Shevchenko came out to say uh, their country are in serious chaos and the whole uh, world should come out and support them. The president of uh, Ukraine is also saying, please, yeah, we need volunteers to come and fight. They had no intention to fight this. Uh, the Russians, but the Russians have decided to fight them, invading uh, their country and them, you know, uh, you know, breaching the fundamental human right. The government of Ukraine has every right to take any decision as far as it does not affect the Russians, but invading their country, you can see some of the, even the, uh, the player, Klitschko brothers, they have everything within their capacity to, to leave the country and of course be safe, but the two said they are going to fight, they are going to stand because you have invaded them. If the, I mean, the person where they are fighting is because they have, I mean, they, they, it's, it's their country. Let's get back to sport. I <laughs> 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 understand that, uh, I mean, this is generating lots of passion. Now, also, Chelsea leadership has changed guard. Even though Roman Ibrahimovic remains the owner of Chelsea, Chelsea would be run by um, Chelsea... Charitable Trustee Fund uh, Foundation, uh, of course, uh, even though a lot of people are also asking for the English FA at this time to, you know, demand that Ibrahimovic takes off his hand, absolutely, totally, from Chelsea. I think he took a very wise decision uh, because, uh, you know, there's been speculations by the FA. Some people are coming out to tell the FA that uh, it should be stripped up of the, uh, you know, the, the ownership. Uh, of Chelsea, but um, uh, he took a very wise decision to step down. If he's stepping down, uh, you know, telling uh, those that you just talked about now to take charge the leadership of the uh, the Chelsea football team. Uh, uh, you know, the eyes, I mean, the focus will not be on Chelsea anymore. But I think the English uh, football federation. But he's still the owner. He's so still the owner. He's still, the, so owner, still the owner of Chelsea. Yeah, so that, that's still a problem. It's still a problem. I think they are still going to deliberate on this and he might just be stripped off. One of the reasons why they are not happy uh, with him is the fact that, uh, you know, he's one of the richest man in Russia 
and is very close to, to, the, the, president, to the president Vladimir of Putin. Russia, Putin. So I think they feel that he should have influenced. Some people like him should have you know, influenced. And he has not spoken up whether he's, like, he's in support of the, the invasion of the... Oh God. But also, of, don't forget that um, um, he's not been able to get into England for some time now. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, even though he runs the club, but he's not been able to come. I think the only time he visited was when Chelsea played Champions League game away from England. It is not, I think if, if I have my way, I know Chelsea fans will not be happy with this. I think it should be stood up because he's not coming out open to say to... to, to but is, um, he, is he willing to sell? It's, it's, no, I think he's not willing to sell. So, that, so that's the thing. You, you, you can, for instance, I no, I, I'm Kule, not saying there Kule, is a law. No, Kule, I cannot there's foresee. There's a law in England okay. that I think the same law is also applicable in Nigeria. If uh, you own a, an establishment in Nigeria and the, the country, uh, the the press, the um, the government finds you wanting in any way, you can be stripped up. So that is it. That's, that is it. That is why. So right they, now they've not found him. They've not they've not found any wrongdoing in him. So for instance, just like me saying, Kule, you have to sell your car. Okay. Do you understand? If, 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 for, 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 for no reason. So right now, even though he's from um, Russia, Russia, his body language has not really come out straight to say he's with the president or not. So Let him come on, out. On that, no, no, he, he, he doesn't have to. Uh, uh, Francais, 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 some business people are, are very uh, careful, diplomat, diplomatic, diplomatic in their dealings. So that, that's exactly what he's doing. But let's move on to the program where Leeds United are right now without um, Bielsa. Uh, you have to give him credit. Took them, broke 20 years jinx for Leeds United, brought them back to the English Premier League um, last season. Uh, did well in their first season in the Premier League. This season, uh, it seems like the Bielsa magic started to dwindle. And um, I mean, they're still struggling. The amount of goals they've considered in the last three to four games tells it all. Yeah, 17 goals considered, two goals scored. It's been so. Uh, a very disappointing one with the way they started. We we're talking about it uh, before we started the show that Leeds United started like a house on fire. Very difficult to beat. Uh, but um, I think what has happened to them has also happened to some of the clubs who started like a house on fire. Uh, you know, clubs like Brentford, uh, uh, clubs like uh, Watford, they, they seem to be losing games. It seems not to be getting uh, their rhythm right now. But for Leeds United, I think it's, it's a sad end. Uh, for uh, you know, Bielsa, you know, ending his uh, reign uh, at the club because at the point where he took over the club about four years ago, the club was not neither here nor there. They were they always night on the table. He came, uh, he took over, and of course they became a, a force to reckon with, and then they got promoted to uh, the English Premier League and last season. They came out, I think they were in the middle, they were they came night, they didn't do badly. So many clubs find it difficult to beat them. They are always a very hard not to crack. But uh, this year they took their foot completely off the gas pedal. But uh, even if the players are not doing well, the axes, the uh, the vituperations, mm. the aspirations always go to the coaches. And it's sad uh, that uh, Biesa has to go. Marcelo Biesa, and of course, a lot of people also criticize um, his style of play. It was very effective in the first two, first two seasons. Uh, but a lot of people said that he could have changed his style of play, but we didn't see that. But um, let's see and uh, hope that they survive relegation battle. Lots of teams right now. Um, Newcastle seems to be leaping out of that. But Absolutely. who else gets that relegation battle? Um, time definitely will tell. Now, before we look at the Carabao Cup, let's take a very quick break. We will come back. Uh, more stories to come, so don't go away. Welcome back. Now, let's um, talk about Carabao Cup. Went down, finals went down last weekend. Um, Liverpool, Chelsea, it was a crunchy tie. Both teams showing lots of respect for themselves. But of course, when it gets down to penalty, it has to be anyone's game. Now, I have, I have my beef in one of those um, goals disallowed by VAR. That goal scored by Romelu Lukaku. In my opinion, even with the VAR line drawing it, I think um, Lukaku was spot on. It was a little um, inside the line, not outside the line, but I, I don't understand the parameters that was used to disallow that goal. It went down to penalty. We saw Liverpool scoring all 11 penalties, including their goalkeeper. And Chelsea move to bring in um, yeah. Kepa Arizabalaga on the um, is it 118th minute backfired? Of course, um, he couldn't make any saves. 
And when he got to his turn, he ballooned the ball straight to Spain. <laughs> it was it was a very good penalty, I must say. Yeah, a very good one. Uh, it was very interesting. The game really lived up to billing, uh, you know, end to end stuff. Uh, you know, uh, these two are uh, arguably okay. Apart from Manchester City, are the best uh, in the, the English Premier League. They really gave a very good account of themselves, and you know, when the goals didn't come, uh, the penalties and you know, uh, Azaga Balaga uh, had to come in. Uh, well, after a very fantastic performance by Mendy, kudos, I think for him, for me, he kept Chelsea in the game. In the game, yeah. Superlative uh, performances uh, for right now. Uh, uh, Bronson, I think for uh, the coach of Chelsea, he, you know, all these coaches always want to take risks. And he thought about it. Okay, do I bring on uh, Kepa or do I continue with Mendy? And considering the fact that, you know, Kepa has always been, when it comes to penalties, one of the best. Uh, but it wasn't just their day. Uh, Bronson, I remember some couple of years ago where, uh, you know, my society wanted to be, wanted to <laughs> Kepa. The guy kept saying no. Saying no. Said, don't worry. Don't cool worry. down. Cool. Relax. Relax. I've, I've got but, this but, but, You know, last week he was very eager uh, to come in and uh, wanted uh, uh, the goal, Mendy to, to leave. And you like you said, he had a very good chance of some of the penalties taken by Liverpool should have been was a bit easy and we would have thought that Kepa on his good day would have been able to save some of them, but it wasn't just his day and he ended up uh he was supposed to be the, the hero the hero, but uh, he became the, the Well, I mean these things happen in football, but of course Liverpool uh at least got the first title of the season. Now let's move on from there and talk about what's happening in the Nigerian Professional Football League. It's absolutely buzzing at this time. Big, big games uh, from fantastic results, must be said. And of course, um, you know, when season starts getting uh, mid-level, we, we start to see, some people say manufactured results, but that's not what we saw <laughs> anyway. But, uh, I mean, I, I think the league has been keenly contested at this time. Yes, it's been keenly contested. It's been, it's been very exciting. Boys have been separated from men. And, you know, the league is, is beginning to take shape. Leeds United are uh, still uh, on top of their game. They are second uh, on the table right now, doing very well. And not forgetting, MFM also, uh, right here in Lagos, were able to notch up a win uh, last week uh, against um, Social Stars of Korea 1-0. And um, Abia Warriors also defeated Shooting Stars of Ibadan uh, by two goals to one. The game stood 1-1. Uh, at halftime, but uh, uh, they let it uh, slip, and Abia United, Abia Warriors were able to uh, get the needed uh, goal to ensure that they cut it away with the three maximum points. One of the talking points of uh, match day 15 of the Nigerian Professional Football League was the game involving uh, uh, Atlant, the rental derby between Atlant and the people selling Fanta Yimba Football Club of Abba. It must be said that uh, the judge Finidi led Ayimba <laughs> has been on the losing streak uh, in recent time. Uh, the, the, the kind of magic uh, that he started with uh, began to dwindle and they began, they began to lose games. Difficult even for them to pick uh, in their they, home ground. Get, get a point in their home ground. So, uh, for the game, the Ranger Derby, you know it can always go either side. Atlanta, for me too, has not been doing well in the season so far. They've been neither here nor there. And the game lived up to a billion. Atlanta won the game by go to nothing. But uh, the report we got, they have it that. Uh, you know, Ayimba, the officiating was a bit poor, and the coach of uh, Ayimba, George Finidi, the, uh, the ex international, came out to say that with the way things are going, the football is going to die in Nigeria because the officiating has been bad. Uh, he didn't talk much, but uh, from what he said, it looks like uh, the home teams are always. Uh, you know, trying their utmost best to uh, probably, uh, you know, work we, with the referee. We're not all caught. At the end of the day, they, they, well, they get the... We, we can't say they're working they with the referee, but we only know some officiating has not been going well. Absolutely. But um, let, let's, let's leave it at that, so that <laughs> we'll be quoted. And then, if you look at the standings right now, Rivers United are comfortably with 32 points, even though they're just one point ahead of second place, player two United. Remo Star started like a house on fire, but right now they're crumbling. Uh, I mean, at huge... they're back to winning ways. Well, seven <laughs> points behind second place and I think eight points behind Rivers United. Enugu Rangers and um, Quara United mix up the top five teams in MPFL. Now, let me we'll just concentrate on the bottom three teams. We have on 18th position, Dakada United, 15 points, Katsina United, 
of course, has 14 points. And MFM is shocking how their form has been very porous in their last few games, even though they were able to win last weekend. But of course, um, they're on the 20th position. I must wonder how they feel right now with 19 teams on their shoulders. Uh, that's a lot of loads, but <laughs> I must say. Now, this month, the fate of Nigerian World Cup hope would be decided. And um, Black Stars of Ghana stands in the way of Nigeria qualifying for the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> and Kule, FIFA has moved the game. Last week we talked about the fact that the game has moved um, just a few days away from yeah, each other and all of that. Nice. But let's, let's look at the Nigerian team. Do you think we have that quality to beat Ghana? We have the quality. We've got the players. Uh, I think where we might have uh, issues is selection and um, coaching. Uh, we've been able to uh, get, as far as I'm concerned, the best collection of uh, uh, you know, personnel uh, at the ends of the national, the, the technical uh, department of the, uh, the national team, Super Eagles right now. So uh, there shouldn't be excuses. We've got the players considering, comparing uh, the quality we have at our disposal with that of Ghana. You will agree with me that we are, uh, you know, a bit, uh, not a bit, we are miles above the Black Stars of Ghana because we can't really say uh, these are the guys, these are top players who are playing for Ghana right now. But for Nigeria, you can see even Ademola Lukman, uh, where we are having challenges. The right side of the, uh, you know, the flank where some of our players, players Chamo Chukwese, didn't do well at the last half con. Uh, we have Ademola Lukman to fill that vacuum right now. We have Emmanuel Dennis who can play as a striker, as a supporting striker, and also play from the front. Also, uh, you know, off for selection. So I think we've got the players, we've got the quality. Uh, Augustine Guayvon, the technical, uh, you know, advisor mm. of the Eagles, came out to say where they might have challenges is. In, in the area of uh, selection. Not forgetting uh, that young man, Calvin Bassi, mm. who plays his trade with Rangers. Uh, you saw what they did against Borussia Dortmund, Rangers versus Borussia Dortmund, where they actually knocked Borussia Dortmund Is he going to be invited to the team? He's going to be invited. According to the failures we're getting, uh, he's going to be invited by whoever because he's impressed. The young man looks very fit. He looks very uh, strong on the ball. And, you know, the way he supports the attack and, of course, come back to cover up mm. is really very commendable. So, we've got what it takes to beat the Black Stars. Uh, but uh, the Ghanaians, one of the things that most of the time when we have the quality, uh, when we are playing against uh, the, the Ghanaians, is the fact that uh, the fear factor comes in. But I don't think we will have that fear factor because back in the days, I uh, remember in the 90s where we had the Ab Abedi Pele, Ab uh, 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 Andre Ayu, mm. no, no, sorry, I beg your pardon, um, Kwame Ayu, they've got Anthony Yeboa, and all of these top uh, Ghanaian players. The Nigerians knows them. We know ourselves back there, and we play ourselves more often. Yeah. And but, you know, but the fear it's, 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 it's of different that, now. It's, it's different. It's different yeah. right? because I don't think some of these players has ever played against uh, the Ghanaians. So yeah. I think it's not going to be. So it's going to be like every other African country. It's going to be like every other African country. All right. So so are you Nigeria saying? Should win it. So are you, are you saying I, I can go ahead and start processing my visa? Yeah, just go ahead and process your visa. <laughs> I, I think I have. Except uh, if we are tactically deficient. In terms of quality, we are far above the Ghanaians. All right, that's um, we are expecting it to be. But let's see if it doesn't. Schooling may have to refund my visa money. <laughs> uh, that process has to start as soon as possible. Now, in the other sports, there are indications that WTA and ATP will drop some Russian uh, players from the shadow. Uh, it doesn't look good uh, for these tennis players. But let, let's see how well things unfold in the course of the week and of course the month we we i don't know if to say it shouldn't happen or not because you know sometimes these guys are you know these things put food on their table and then sometimes the decision of their government can also come to hunt them but let, let's see what atp holds i know you want us to comment on it but time will not permit <laughs> us to take that now let's talk about boxing where well, lawrence okolia retains wbo cruiserweight title with unanimous point victory over Mikhail Sislak at London O2 Arena. Fantastic. I mean, uh, the name tells it all, but of course, it's a Briton, yeah. <laughs> even though um, uh, the name sounds Nigerian. Yeah, not a fantastic one for Lawrence uh, Okolie. But he won. He won, yeah. But, um, you know, when you watched the bout, I saw it. Uh, they were holding themselves. The holding and all of that was a bit much. 
uh, you know, it wasn't at its best, but at least according to the judges, uh, it was unanimously, uh, he unanimously won his opponent. But uh, one of the things that actually got, caught my attention was the fact that when he was going into the ring, we had two Nigerians uh, joining him. And that's why, <laughs> uh, you know, when you mentioned the Nigerian thing, his mentor is Anthony Joshua. And, and of course, he followed him, not forgetting uh, Israel and this one, yeah. mm. uh, both were with him and they actually encouraged him uh, to notch up that victory. So he also came out to uh, say after the battle that it no, wasn't, but, his, wasn't at his best. But, that but sorry, uh, Anthony Joshua is not a Nigerian, he's flying British flag. Yeah, he's flying, but he, he had been flying <laughs> in Nigeria uh, all the time. He tells everyone <laughs> to listen that he's also a Nigerian. I remember his, uh, uh, when he was interviewed some Bokule, years ago, even with the Queen, he flies British, he, British, he, he, he flies. He, 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 he talked British about flag. eating uh, pounded yam, you know, Bro. with a goosey yeah. and all of that. He, he said fly, it. He flies the British flag. <laughs> Let's leave it at that. No Thank doubt you. About that. No doubt about that. Thank you very much. It's always a fun um, time doing this show with you. Yeah, my pleasure, bro. With that, the wrap of the program today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. Now, don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms currently displaying on your screen right now. You can also go to YouTube, type Spot Pizza, and please subscribe and feel free to watch our previous content. My name is Brownson Wan. On behalf of all the production crew, thank you so much for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.